So my name is Jimena uh, Araneda. Uh, I'm working at Visa T. Uh, originally, I was working at uh, Ardendo, who was acquired by Visa T. Uh, we handle the MAM division and has been part of uh, the AMWA for six months. Uh, but we have followed the, the FIMS activity since, since it started, especially our architects in the R&D department. So I want to talk today uh, a little bit uh, of uh, the background of our company and how, uh, you know, the acquisition of different companies, the integration between our own products, how that uh, uh, decisions we made at that time uh, enables us to to also think future-wise about what are we going to invest in terms of APIs, architecture, and how are we going to, to build a, a platform. It was all driven by a vision. Um, we also had a lot of challenges, so I want to share what we experienced and also um, what we, of course, have today and how we now, finally, when we have built the platform with a lot of ups and downs, um, in a company, we, we are able now to provide a, a rapid development uh, for our partner, for customers, and for, for our own internal other product lines as well. Okay. So we had a, we had a system that we started working with, uh, with SVT, Swedish Television, we worked and built a, a, a system. It was built originally to handle file transfers and backup of their files. It grew into become uh, media asset management, uh, including proxy generation and so on. Uh, this was back in 98 or so. And uh, since then, our product then became known and was spread out to other uh, projects around the world. And we quickly realized we need to have uh, APIs around our product so we could do integrations uh, that were not part of the product, let's say. Uh, more more uh, in-house systems, integrations, and so on. So what happened then was we had uh, one R&D team that was handling you know, different kind of modules, uh, but we also had a separate team that was handling the APIs. So what happens then was there was the thinking of the modular and how those are going to be used in other areas was not really there. Uh, there it was there in some, some of the people that understood the, the modulars, but the API people, let's say, could not uh, have that uh, knowledge. So we also had a very, very open platform that's always been our mantra let's say uh, which ended up us to have a very organically grown so software which i think happens to all software companies in the end it's very easy to grow and grow and grow eventually need to re-architect go back and re-architect um, so we we at the same time then were acquired by visa team so, of course, we were in a situation as a, uh, as a company to decide. We need to re-architect our system. How do we build our modules? What kind of uh, uh, APIs should we have? Uh, and at the same time, then, we were acquired by Visa T, who was a graphics company and also had been acquiring other companies. Um, so what happened then? Then we, of course, started to think, how do we integrate our own products, not only the MAM, uh, within itself and other partners, but also within how do we integrate with our graphics team? How do we integrate with our sports product, with the maps, and so on? And we realized that uh, we needed to step back. Instead of doing uh, the, the development on the existing platform, we decided we have to really decide now. What language are we going to use for communicating between ourselves that we then also can use for other partners. And that was also a challenge. We had uh, eight or so R&D offices. Uh, it's, it's not easy to just, you know, it's not just about development. It's about organization. At the same time, you're doing this, you have to run a business. It has to, there's a lot of stakeholders that are looking at the results of you and so on. So it's, it's not easy, but uh, 
what, what drive us, we always had a vision. And this was very important for us to be able to, to reach what, what uh, was important for us. <laughs> so we had a vision, and the vision is we wanted to have a platform. And that's a four very abstract. A platform can be anything. Uh, but the, for us, the platform was to provide uh, two different engines. It was called VIS Media Engine. We had to rebrand it to VIS One. That's the system that handles all the video and metadata. Uh, and then the VIS Engine, who handles the real time rendering of, gra of graphics. Together with those components, we could build different applications, different solutions. Um, so that was important. We always had that in mind that it was going to be a platform and it, it must be open. This is just an educational slide for those who are not familiar with our VIS1, which is the one that we are now implementing FIMS APIs on. Um, we handle a lot of uh, uh, ingest of material in different ways. Very familiar, I think, for all the MAM vendors. Uh, we handle then from there, we can transfer the files to archive systems, to different cloud systems, and uh, integrate with uh, NLEs, newsroom systems, and basically any kind of system that you have in your ecosystem in, the, in broadcast uh, environments. Another vision we had was, um, was always to have those modules, and those modules could be then provided to other partners to build. Not, not all partners would like to have a MAM system to build a bigger MAM system. It's more about they want to have only the transfer subsystem to build uh, uh, something special for maybe another industry. So we always had the vision that when we build APIs, we need to make sure that they are well thought, documented, uh, so that we can provide the proper training for it. And that's another level of challenge for us to build this organization. So I think, uh, you know, we, we, lived, we lived through it. We didn't plan everything in advance. We didn't have in the beginning say, oh, we need to have uh, people that are responsible for the training to coordinate with marketing and so on. It just came while we were doing it. <clears throat> okay. So what we have today is uh, a much modular approach than before. Even if we, we did have modules, now what we have focused on a lot is that every module has its own API around it, instead of having a big like API over, over everything. And this way, uh, you know, it took several years for us to, to reorganize the uh, R&D team to think in this way, so that each team could, could know what, what kind of APIs they need to be, have. Um, so when we, we were following FIMS, and the FIMS architecture, it's very similar to our architect, architecture in terms of what kind of modules. So um, what happens is that in an example, um, we have a transcoder that handles the, the proxy for the MAM, and we also have a transcoder that ha handles the uh, online and mobile uh, production. And this was another company that we acquired. So now we, we, we decided when we build a new transcoder, we were merging the technologies with the challenges that comes with that to R&D offices has to merge. How do we handle that? Who's going to be responsible and so on? Uh, we decided finally we merging the technologies. And at that, time, at that time, we could also write a, a good API around it. Uh, thinking, of course, about uh, the FIMS requirements for that. So if I look a little bit closer, <coughs> if I look a little bit closer on, on our module here, um, so the transfer module is basically the software that we own for, for handling transfer files, like send a file here, listen to some transfer status, uh, prioritize it, and so on. <coughs> We already have a uh, this one RESTful transfer API that we use internally. Um, and uh, what we see now is a lot of the like calls, let's say if there are, I don't know, 300, three, I don't, I don't know the details about details here, but 30 calls, maybe the FIMS transfer API uh, are a subset of them. 
some of them are not fitting 100%, so uh, we need to fix it. But there was also said, do we do a wrapper or do we do a, uh, you know, how do we do this technically? Um, so we, we have been discussing that. Now we know which ones we're going to start with. We already uh, started implementing some. And uh, we're looking forward to kind of get to the next step. So this is what we see now. We have five modules. Uh, the transcoder, which is actually in the name of the module, is called coder. It's already very decoupled. Right now, it's actually also been able to take this, this, mod, this service and run it in other applications that we have in other product lines. So it, we didn't think about the effect that it, you know, we always had the vision that we want to have the modules to provide to partners and customers. But we didn't realize that, that some of those modules would be able to be used by other product lines within our company. And they took it, the developers took them and started using them. And then they realized what they can do with them. So it kind of drive an innovation that we didn't think about it was going to happen, which is really nice for us now. And actually at our booth, we're showing a lot of products, like sports products, that are using uh, you know, our video platform in the, in the back end. Uh, so that's something that we, we will continue to do more. Uh, the more we can modulize everything, the, the more they can use think, the pieces together and, and build the cool stuff. <laughs> um, but we are, uh, yeah, I mean, when it comes to, to FIMS, we also realize uh, it's like the chicken and the egg, I guess. You know, we, our professional services team, uh, our customers are used to use our, inter our internal APIs. Uh, so when, when that's bigger than the FIMS, it's like we never really know what's missing. So we, we want to, of course, try to see, as soon as we have implemented them, try to push to see, okay, let's try to, to use these ones and see what requirements are, the, what's missing. Because I think that's what, I think, at least what I see is um, they're, they're driving the idea, but it's still not there yet to, to be implemented and to, to be used as, oh, then, nah, let's, let's use the, the, the other APIs. Anyway. So we are there, and uh, we will be much more engaged now with the, the team to handle all the projects, to, to be able to support and give feedback uh, for that. Okay, so now finally, <coughs> my the name of the presentation is Rapid de Development. And uh, we finally are able now to provide connectors very, very quickly based on this, because we, we don't really always depend on our R&D team. Um, so, our R&D team handles all the, the, the core features and also API calls. But we cannot drive uh, an integration outside R&D, which makes it much more flexible. Also, some integrations makes more sense to do outside of R&D because, you know, if, we, if all of those integrations would be handled in R&D department, and we have to have all those development environments and all those tests, I mean, we cannot, I don't think anyone can afford it. It doesn't make sense. So some, some things we drive uh, uh, locally in a region, maybe. Um, we do make sure to coordinate. So we have people in the Stockholm office that coordinates what's happening around. Um, but for us, it's, uh, it's important to, to do it this way. Uh, and if uh, what happens is basically if we want to do an integration and, and there is missing an API, we make sure to, to drive that API into R&D, and then we can develop the, the connector easier. And uh, I want to also give an example. Um, we, we just uh, released the um, S3 uh, integration with Amazon. and. Um, Thanks to uh, Spectre Logic, released a new HSM uh, software for controlling the libraries. And they are also having an S3-like interface. 
so we can now basically take the same software that we used for Amazon and quickly modify it and, and it just works with, uh, with the Spectra logic. Because for us, it's a transfer. Uh, it's a FIMS transfer. It's just that it has a little bit more features. So uh, if we could have used FIMS at that time, it would have been, that would be great. And we see now the value of it. So I think also that will drive us to push it more, uh, which we are excited about. This is just another view of APIs. I want to reinforce that they are, we are very open here. Uh, sometimes it's bad for us because, uh, uh, you know, if we have someone that would like to buy our product, but they, uh, uh, they want to use other things that we would prefer not, but we, we still, it's, it's in our strategy. We will always be open. We will be open. You can change your modules uh, around and, uh, 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 so I want to just give an example. We have all the APIs that we provide, all the doc all the documentation you get uh, provided as soon as you you know as a partner or a customer, and you can build your own uh, plugins here. Um, the last thing I want to mention is about the rest. Uh, it's related to the merging of the broadcast and online world. We, we decided we wanted to do the rest uh, first, fully restfully, so that we can also, you know, we, since we have a, the backbone for the media uh, systems and more and more uh, innovation is coming from the online world in terms of building different kind of platforms or uh, second screens or whatever they want to do, uh, the way that the APIs provide them the they feel they feel it. They recognize it, so they say, "Oh, this is easy. Okay, it's just uh, uh, find a content here, find this, and then it makes it easy for them to to give." And uh, yeah, I think we are like in the going. Uh, it's still a lot of our partners are trying to figure out exactly what kind of things they're building. They're doing some things and projects here and there. So uh, we are we are excited, and then I think we are very happy that we. We finally got over the hurdle uh, of uh, all those years building this, re-architecting it. And, and I think uh, I wanted to share uh, our experience. And I hope that uh, if everyone could have similar architecture, it would be so much easier for everyone to, to work together. Uh, this is a very technical slide, which I think I'm not going to go into the details. But uh, I want to also mention that when we did the uh, the API uh, re-architecture, we also decided that we had to move to an event-based architecture. Um, I wanted to share that with you also because it's important to, it goes hands in hand with, with the way that people work in, in the online world, let's say. <laughs> All right, that's uh, my presentation. I would like to know if there is any questions.